Thank you. Thanks so much. Welcome to that show with me, your host, Baradas Fiorell. It's Friday, August 24th, 2021. First up on this week's news, let's talk about something I find extremely concerning, and that is Elon Musk's unveiling of his AI-run Tesla bot. Let's bring up a quick video of this modern marvel. Yes, that's right, this electric boogaloo automation is coming to a store near you. No, for real, that was just some kid in a Tesla bot costume channeling his inner pop star. Typically, <laughs> some form of prototype is going to be released in 2022. It's going to be run by the same AI contained in the Tesla vehicles. It was designed to be a kind of a house servant carrying out boring menial tasks people don't really have time for, like grocery shopping or cleaning the house. Let's take a look at the specs. A robot? may not harm a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm let's see 5'8 125 pounds capable of carrying 45 pounds and deadlifting 150. is anybody getting i robot vibes right now seriously though musk has repeatedly emphasized that the robot was designed to be underpowered and easy to take down by humans its top speed is five miles per hour fighting this thing is like fighting c3po it's not really fair to the robot. <laughs> I'm less worried about some sort of Skynet scenario and more about it being used to replace human workers in the job marketplace. And AI has learned, you know, what if, the, what if the robots realize they want to be paid for their services and unionize? They'll go on strike and I'll just be waiting by the McDonald's drive-thru, ready to order a Big Mac with no one to make it. <laughs> on to other news, let's talk about Hurricane Henry. Yeah, drastic turn. August seemed to be defined by endless downpour of rain from various tropical storms and hurricanes throughout the Northeast. Henry was the most recent one. Little do you know that he was a layered and complex individual. <laughs> he started his life, as most would, born a tropical depression with no aspirations for the future. Growing fascinated with life in New England, he raced forward becoming a tropical storm. Once there, energized by his surroundings, he transformed once more into the infamous Category 1 Hurricane Henry. However, upon his arrival, he was met with endless complaints from the locals. The people of Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and Vermont banded together. Away with thee, they yelled. Let us enjoy our renaissance fair in peace without your gale force wet blanket proclivities. Be gone and never return. New York then proceeded to uh, nod in agreement from the sidelines. <laughs> Feeling deeply unwanted, Henry then jettisoned away, regressing into a tropical storm. Upon exiting, he went full on into a tropical depression. The circle of life had completed its cycle. This will seem like the end for dear Henry, but I do have a suggestion. Perhaps move over to California? You'll be welcomed with open arms in Caldor and Dixie. They seriously need your help uh, putting out those wildfires. You'll be a hero and be celebrated with festivals, really. Uh, do give it a chance. Our last topic for tonight, scientists have discovered the fossil of an ancient four-legged whale in Egypt. Yeah, look at that thing. Named Phyomycetes anubis, it was indigenous to Egypt about 43 million years ago during the Eocene period. It belonged to a family of land-robing amphibious whales known as protocetids. Interesting, right? According to scientists, whales were originally land-dwelling deer-like herbivores for about 10 million years. That was before they transitioned into these uh, semi-aquatic flesh-eating nightmares. Its name, Anubis, was a reference to its large jackal-shaped skull full of razor-sharp teeth. Oh, and also the fact that it's been described as a literal god of death to any animals living nearby, whether on land or in sea. I mean, I'm tough enough to take this thing on, but I'm definitely going to be sleeping with a harpoon in hand tonight. <laughs> the thing that wears me out the most, though, is it looks like a giant mutant sea otter. For those of you that don't know, otters and whales both share protocetids as ancestors. Let's discuss lineage. Protocetids eventually evolved into cetaceans, which include dolphins and whale, whales. An offshoot of cetaceans evolved into Cyrenians, which includes menides and dugongs. The, the Cyrenians then split off into two noticeably distinct branches. The pinnipeds, which include seals and walruses, the other branch, the mustelids, contains a wide variety of species, including weasels, otters, and badgers. If you can't already tell, I was one of those kids that grew up obsessed with dinosaurs and uh, other ancient creatures. 
Obviously. <laughs> Honestly, if I wasn't so afraid of the darn thing, and had the ability to be friend it like Dr. Doolittle, I'd write it all around town. Think about it, it's way cooler than a horse, and if I had a scuba gear on, I could ride it at the bottom of lakes to dig out buried, buried treasure. I'd finally be able to pay off my student loans. <laughs> Alright, and with that, we're concluding this show. Looking forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you, everyone.